quickly another position about the doubts and shakiyat in Salat is the time that anywhere in Salat I have the doubt or shak between three and four rakah the third and the fourth rakah I'm not sure if this is the third rakah that I am saying or this is the fourth rakah wherever in Salat if that happened to me the responsibility is to consider that as the fourth rak'ah. I consider it as the fourth rak'ah. And then after salat, I will say one rak'ah salat ihtiyat. We didn't say that before, between three and four. And then one rak'ah salat ihtiyat, as we mentioned before how to do it. Or two, two rak'ah salat ihtiyat while you're sitting. One rak'ah while you're standing, or two rak'ah while you're sitting. That's the hook. Uh, tonight I want to mention, because I heard a lot, again, some people, they have problem with uh, when there is jama'ah, how to start the salat with jama'ah. I heard last night, the night before, some people had, you know, questions about it. You have to be careful when you see that Imam is already in Salat and he's saying his prayer depends on what rakat Imam is, you have different responsibilities. It's not that if Imam is in Sajda, so you can start your Salat and go to Sajda with Imam. No. It depends on where Imam is right there. You have to follow it according to that position. For instance, if this is the uh, third rakat of the Imam, if this is the third rakat that Imam is saying Tasbihat Arba'eh and I just want to start it, it's going to be my first rakat. Again, I said that before, either you have to wait until Imam goes to Ruku and then you catch Imam in Ruku or you have to make sure there's enough time that you say you're at least hand. So the better way, more secure way is you let Imam go to Ruku and then you catch Imam in Ruku while Imam is in Ruku. So that's Ruku that you go, it consider that you said your Hamd and Surah. Make sense? Um, if this is the second Rakat of Imam, that's fine. You don't have to wait. You just start saying your Salat because Imam is saying what? Hamd and Surah. So, and that would be covering your Hamd and Surah. Inshallah, uh, we'll pay attention to this Ahkam as well so our Salat Jama'ah would not be void or invalid or batil inshallah sawad ala muhammad wa ala muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad please come forward sallu ala muhammad wa ala muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad alhamdulillah we were able to talk about many factors and some obstacles in the path of Allah. Last night also we specifically talked about the topic of Tawbah and Repentance. One of the most important uh, factors that when it comes to Islam, to following Din, following the path of Allah, we should pay attention. Beside the knowledge that we gain, what we did within this 22 days and nights, it was just to gain information and knowledge. We were hearing, right? Did you do anything else besides the amal that you just did? It was listening and learning. This is the first step, but the more important than just learning is the amal, to acting ac action upon the knowledge that you have. Whatever you learn, you act upon it. Some people, when it comes to speeches, they think they have to go to a speech that every single time they learned something new. They ask some of the ulama, what should we do? We just want... One of the ulama says, whatever you learned so far, act upon it. Act upon what you learned so far and then learn new things. Imagine you gain, you have a bank account and you just deposit money, and just deposit money, and then this deposit us, and you don't use your money. And you said, I'm so rich. Okay, you're rich, but what is the money for? If you're not, if you're not using it, and you're living in a poor situation, a broken house, you're not rich. Some people are like this. 
They have a lot of money, but they don't use it. You gain a lot of information, knowledge, but if you're not applying them into your life, you're not following them, it's not good. Ilm without amal, It's not good. You have to act upon it. Anas kulluhum halikun illal alamun. All people that are in danger, except those people that they know something. Alam. Alam doesn't mean someone that was in Hawza and studied you know, Islamic, in the Islamic seminary only. Alam is the person that is learning, gaining information. Has different levels. You just learned this, you're Alam about this topic, right? Ulama, because they were in Hawza, they know more about these things, that's why they know better. But if I know that, okay, I just learn some of the ahkam of doubts and shakiyat. So I'm alim about the ahkam of shakiyat so far that I learn. Wal alimun kulluhum halikun illa al amilun. All the ulama. That means all of us, not just ulama and the member. Kulluhum halikun. They're all in danger. Not only us, just not everyone. Is in danger except those who are acting upon their knowledge. So I have to do something. I have to act upon it. This is one of the most important topics that we have to keep in our mind. If we learn all these things about the path of Allah, Alhamdulillah. Talk about show, we talk about sab, we talk about ikhlas. We talk. I'm going to ask myself, how many of these topics that I learned so far at least I'm trying to do something upon it. Did I just learn or I'm doing something? Because knowledge is something and amal is something. If they're not together, imagine in Salat, the majority of the actions that you do in Salat are amal. You're doing it, right? If your thought is distracted in Salat, the Salat is still okay. It's not invalid. I'm saying my Salat, but my mind it's somewhere else. Your salat is still okay. But if I don't do ruku, my salat is what? Masada, right? So I have to act upon it. I have to do something. And if I'm just in practice, I'm distracted. How can I do it, Sayyid? I heard a lot that I shouldn't be distracted in salat. How can I have this amal and this action not to be distracted? It happens to all of us, right? As soon as you start your Salat, you are everywhere except in Salat. Everywhere. How can I do it? Have I ever asked this question from myself? I know that I have to focus in my Salat, but how? How many times I went to that alim, to that scholar to ask this question? Okay, I want to know in amal, in action, in practice what to do. Besides just asking theoretical questions. Okay, that's fine, that's good, perfect. But ask about the amal as well. If I am a master, you know, doctor, physician, a surgeon, but I have never been in a, you know, a hospital, I have never been doing any operation, would you trust me? No. So you have never tried it. I have to act upon it. How can I just get away from shaitan? Because I know part of that is shaitan comes to me as soon as, why? Why I'm not doing salat, shaitan is not way, in, you know, distracting me now. But as soon as I start my salat, shaitan is there. Have you ever asked this question? Because shaitan comes to those people that they're getting close to Allah. 30 steps getting closer to Allah comes to those people that are learning these steps. Otherwise, those people that are way far away from Allah, they're somewhere else tonight, why should shaitan go there? He comes around people. One of the Ashab, he asked Ma'asun that why shaitan comes around the muhibbin of Ahlul Bayt more? The muhibbin of Ahlul Bayt. Why he comes around them? Beautiful answer. They said, thieves, that they want to rob a house. Have you ever seen they go to a house that is empty? Have you seen? The thieves? The 
a thief go to a house that is empty, is broken, there's nothing there. That should be a very, you know, not professional thing. They usually go to the house that there is something to get. Shaitan doesn't go to a house, to a heart that is empty. He comes to a heart that is what? Full of precious things, assets. And he wants to take that, the muhabbat of Adam. How? By destroying your a'mal, your actions. By destroying your actions. It's the best way. How can I keep myself in salat and getting away from this topic? And by the way, this is just introduction. I didn't start my speech yet. We are here, alhamdulillah. Did you say tonight we are here all night or tomorrow? Oh, I thought it's tonight. Oh, my mistake. Sorry. Salawat ala Muhammad wa We'll be here tomorrow, inshallah. Whenever I recite my salat, as soon as I see shaitan is there, I'm distracted. This is practical solution. Listen. Shaitan is there, I'm distracted. I force myself to come back and think about Allah. How many times? 10,000 times in salat, you do it again. Shaitan doesn't get tired, right? Why should I get tired? I'll do it again. You come distract me? As soon as I remember, this is the dangerous part. Sometimes we get distracted and we don't know that we're distracted in the salah. <laughs> we forget. We call it jahl murakkab. I don't know that I don't know. <laughs> Some people, they don't know that they don't know. I get distracted and I don't know that I'm distracted. All of a sudden, oh my God, what am I thinking about? I was doing my hand, now I'm in, you know, in LA. <laughs> As soon as you remember that you are distracted, come back. Think about Allah. Think about something. Think about heaven. Think about hell. Think about donation. Think about something that leads towards Allah. Do it and do it and do it and do it. Believe me, you do 40 salat like this. Force yourself to get used to it. And then you see that next salat that you're saying, it's getting the routine for you that as soon as you get distracted, you think about it. You think back to Allah, about Allah. You get used to it. You get used to it. You have to do it in Ahmed in action. This is one of the mistakes, one of the problems that the Ashab and the companions of Ahlul Bayt, they were missing it. The deficiency that they had, remember we were talking about this? Why? Although they knew that the best of all people are Ahlul Bayt, they were not following them. They were killing them. They were against them. They invited Imam Hussain, they stood in front of him. The big part of that is because lack of sincere amal. They were not used to amal. They knew a lot. Some of them, they memorized the whole of Quran. <laughs> but they were not acting upon. Some people, they recite Quran. Allah Akbar. And the Quran curses them. They are qari. They recite Quran and Quran curses them. Quran. They do talawat al Quran They were reciting Quran. They were fighting with Imam Zaman. This is the land of Quran and them. That's why they were not following or that, that because of the deficiency that they had in their heart. Lack of amal. Lack of amal. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he had a student called Called Sudair. He was the student of Imam Sadiq. One day he was uh, traveling with Imam and he asked Imam this question. You have this question in your mind maybe as well. Ya Ibn Rasulullah, why you are not standing and arising against Bani Abbas? This is your right. You have to be the Caliph of the Rasulullah. You have the, you have the Vilayat, Imamat, and you have to be... Why are you not standing in front of them? How many students Imam Sadiq had? Who knows? They said 2,000. For that small community. 2,000 students, imagine. They were coming, listening, Imam Sadiq learning. Some of the head of the Ahlul Sunnah, the school of thoughts, Hanafi, Shafi, some of these people, they were students of the Muhammad Sadiq. 2,000 people. Why are you not arising about uh, many Abbas? You know they're zalim, they're uh, oppressing people. 
Imam said, we don't have enough friends. They said, you don't have enough friends. You have 100,000 people ready to help you. And mom says, 100,000 people? Probably like this, the Tajjah, 100,000 people. He says, no, even more. You probably have 200,000 people that are ready to be with you and help you. Imam said, 200,000 people to help us to rise against Bani Abbas? <laughs> he said, no, even more. Half of the community of Muslim and Islamic community are with you. He was saying, the students, 2,000 people are just coming to learn from Imam Sadiq. Half of this Muslim community is with you to be against, Imam, against uh, Bani Abbas. Imam didn't say anything. Okay. So they were going and going. They got to the place called, the area called Yanbo. Pay attention. This is one of those hadiths that you never forget. Imam, they were passing Yanbo and Imam said, Suday, look over there. Suday was looking over there. Imam said, Suday, do you see those sheep over there? Yes, I see them. Imam said, if we had as many sincere friends as those, as number of those sheep, we would probably arise in front of, against, and help us. So they said, I counted them. And I saw that there are only 17 sheep. Wow. So is that 2,000 students? 17 sincere friends. What is missing here? Imam Hussein, that we call him Qareeb Mazlum, he had 72 sincere companion and soldier that they died for him. How about Imam Hassan Askari? How about Musa ibn Ja'far? What is missing here? If they are going to the University of Imam Sadiq, they're seeing Imam Sadiq, they're learning from Imam Sadiq, what is wrong here that they're not following him? Lack of? What is it? Amal. Action. <coughs> they were learning, they're not acting upon it. They were coming, Alhamdulillah, you are mu'mineen. They were coming to this speech. Upon the ma'arif that they were learning from Imam Sadiq. So that is so dangerous. If I know more, I have more responsibility. If I don't act among what I, I am learning more, I will be in more danger. I have to be careful. I have to be careful. Not just to sit down and be happy that I'm learning. No, I have to do something. Some people, they thought if they sit down and they don't help Ahlul Bayt, they don't have Imam Sadiq, they don't have Imam Hassan, Imam Hassan, they're fine. Muawiyah, he paid some of the tribes, he paid them, he said, if you're not going to be with me, it's fine, I'll pay you, but don't be with Hassan ibn Ali as well. You see what Shaitan wants? Huh. If you're not going to be with me, that's fine. Just don't be with him as well. But when it comes to Ahlul Bayt, no. You have to be with us. This is the only way that you can be. But when it comes to Shaitan, he said either be with Shaitan or don't be with Haq. Be careful. No, Haq is in Amal to follow Ahl al-Bayt and I want to do it. I have to be very careful how Shaitan sometimes come and you know, try to deceive me. So quickly, like any other physical deficiency and sicknesses that I might have. When you get cold, there are some symptoms, right? You sneeze, you cough, you know, throat, throat, stuff like that. There are some signs. Say it, is there any sign that I feel that lack of amal is hurting me and shaitan is penetrating into my iman? How practical is this, right? You can't find any more practical information about this, but you have to act upon it. And I'm telling myself first. Is there any symptoms and sign that I see shaitan is penetrating into my iman? Because sometimes, like I said, you are distracted, you are lost, and you don't know yourself as well. 
Many people, they get sick. They don't know the symptoms. They get worse and worse and worse. And then when they go to the doctor, it says, it's too late. The virus is so strong right now. We can't do too much for us. Because they don't know the signs. If I don't know the signs of the heart when it gets sick, it is dangerous. Some of the signs I want to share with you. The first sign that I feel that lack of Iman, or lack of Amal, upon Iman, upon information that I learned, what is it, the first sign and the first symptom is lack of appetite and unwillingness towards Amal. Divine Amal. When it comes to Amal, I'm not willing to do that. Have you seen when you get cold, you don't have an appetite to eat, lack of interest. They bring the best food, the most spiciest food in front of you, but you don't want to eat. Why? Because you you lost your appetite. Because this is one of the symptoms of sickness. I want to open Quran, recite two ayah. I don't feel it. I can't. As soon as I open the Quran. I know it's bad the feeling that I have, but I don't know what to do with it. This is like the Tulqah, this is the good, this is the Ramazan. As soon as I want to say two raka salat, it's like everything is pulling me down. Don't move. I want to donate something. The only thing that comes to my mind is, is one dollar. Something is holding me back. Lack of interest, unwillingness about helping and acting upon it. I want to come to masjid and I don't have anything else to do, to the center, to speech. But I don't want, I'm sitting. Sometimes we are in ups and downs part of our life. This is different. All of us, we have it. You see, sometimes you go do khair, 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 and you see sometimes you go all the way to the down part. You don't want to do it. It sometimes happens, if you quickly notice it and come back, inshallah, that's fine. It's not okay to have it, but we all have it. If you notice it and quickly come back, that is different. But this unwillingness is more, you know, it's longer than temporary time. All the time. But do you know how to fix it? It's just act upon it. When it comes to coming to masjid, I don't feel it, I do it. I have my, my, my kids, you know, and alhamdulillah, people when they want to not to do it, they justify it beautifully, beautifully. Why you're not doing it? Why you're not coming to masjid? Don't even ask me. You know what? My kids, they have a school tomorrow. I have to work, go to, go to work tomorrow. My 10,000 reasons to bring is not to come to this country. Just just. You don't feel it, you don't have time, you have kids, come to masjid. 10 minutes, I'm telling you. 10 minutes, if you really have those justifications and reasons, come to masjid. 10 minutes, sit down, go home. Any other reasons, any other justification? Come, 10 minutes with your kids, with your family. Stop here, breathe here, look at the signs here. Eat here, go. Don't make it. Some of the amal when you do, even when you die, they still give you thawab. One of the amal I told you, like mafati, shirk for me, said about Sheikh Abbas for me. Even after he's dead, whoever opens mafati, how many million people opens mafati during Ramazan or during the year? Whoever opens Mafati, recite one, one, one small du'a of Mafati, the Thaba would go to him and Shaykh Abbas as well. I have to be smart. Donation. Do you know donations to the center, to the masjid, is one of those thawab and amal that even when you're not there anymore, when you're dead after 120 years, the thawab still goes to you. There's some of the thawab, some of the amal, if you do it, you still get thawab all the time. You donate one Qur'an to masjid. Whoever opens that Qur'an and recites Qur'an, the thawab would go to you as well. 
You hope to build a center to purchase a center. Donation. I don't have that much money. Okay, you could cover just this much of this wall of the masjid. I don't know how about that. No. Do you know that you will be sure in the thawab of everyone that will be in that masjid sometimes? Our deen is so beautiful. How to give thawab. Donation. If I know that for donation, I can, I can act like that and I can collect that much money not to make a deal, but how can I get closer to Allah and I have an account that every time they are sending thawat to my bank account, spiritual bank account, that would be amazing, I'll do it. And then they don't have to come here and kill themselves and say, please help this center. Believe me, I told all the centers when they come here and then they have founders or fundraising or something, I said, don't beg, please. The audience should beg you to pay you. If I know that Allah says, remember last night? If you give me a loan, I'll make it alaf and mudaf, I'll make it multiple times more and I will give it back to you. Then why should they come here and stand here and say, please help the center? This is the mistake that unfortunately the majority of the centers that we have, specifically us, we have problem because of that. We have to beg people to help. They have to beg us to help to the center. If I know that, to act upon my amal, my knowledge, I will be fine, I will be perfect. So the first symptom is that lack of interest. If I feel that sometimes I don't have that much interest and appetite towards Iman, I have to be careful towards amal. If I see whatever I'm doing against Ahlul Bayt's lessons, I have to be careful. Very simple. It might be a relationship between couples. It might be a relationship between parents, children, between siblings. If I see that there is something wrong in my house, I have to fix it. I have to act upon the knowledge that I got from Ahlul Bayt. Quran says couples are together to, to live in peace. And I, if I see there's something wrong, if there's no peace in my life, I have to fix it. Not just be quiet, not to, no, just to fix it however I can. I want to see what Hazza she wants me right now. If she wants me to act like this, if, honestly, this is a rule of thumb, if Hazza was in my life right now, is she satisfied with the strategies that I'm applying to my life or not? If I'm afraid, oh my God, if she notices, she will you know, be upset. If that's wrong, I have to change it. I have to change it. Be careful. Sometimes we know about all these things, but when it comes to our private life, we forget about it. If you don't cure the first symptom, as soon as you feel the first symptoms. If you don't cure it, it goes to the second level of the symptoms and level of disease. Which the virus is stronger, it's mutated, it's stronger, and it's more, it's more difficult to fix it. The second part is what? Is shak in aqaid. This is the symptoms. Some people that always have shak and doubts in their beliefs. As soon as it comes to, you know, this type of things, their questions start and start and they want to question everything. The question that wants to destroy, not the question they want to learn. They ask to deny it. Those questions. Otherwise, questions are the best. Half of our is what? Question. <clears throat> it happened to us more. We see some people, they come and they think they know a lot. And their nafs, mashallah, is so boost, they want to show it. They come to me and say, by the way, that thing that over there, it was like this, or it was not like this, and it was like this. And as soon as they come to you, you notice, you know, as soon as they start talking, the body just shares the way that they talk. You know that what's the purpose? Shak. But the question is the best. If you don't ask questions, you don't learn. Those questions that they ask, it's not a question. They give comments to destroy. Because they don't want to admit that this is exist. 
If they admit into it, they have to follow it, but they don't want to follow it. And the third symptom that is way worse than the last two ones is a rape, which is higher level of shack doubt. Rape is just ignoring and denying. Shack still is, you know, 50, 50, 60, 40. Rape is just, no, I'm not gonna accept it. I can't accept it anymore, rape. In Quran says, La raiba fi. There's no rape in Quran. Everything is clear. Everything is clear. So sometimes I have to check myself, analyze myself, might make sure that I don't have any of these symptoms. Sometimes shaitan comes to you, starts with makruhat, non-recommended things. Okay, so it's not haram, I can do it. Yes, you can do it, but it might be the way that shaitan wants to penetrate into your heart. Makruhat. You think it's fine to do it, but as soon as you do it, you see you're more to towards doing these non-recommended things. You do it, you do it, you do it, and then finally you see, oh, you're following shaitan. But sometimes, you see, you're following mustahabbat, which is recommended by Urafa and ulama all the time. They said, if you want to be stronger in your wajibat and faraiz, mandatory amal, start with mustahabbat as well. If you do it with mustahabbat, because mustahabbat you don't have to do it. When you do it, you get new more and more and more. Because you're doing it because you feel it. Beautiful ayah of Quran. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amana. O you believers. Ma lakum idha qila lakum unfaru fi sabeel Allah ithaqaltum ila al What's wrong with you? Quran is saying, O oh, Mu'mini, what's wrong with you guys? What's wrong? When it comes to dunya, you're so happy, you're so active, and you're doing it. When it comes to the path of Allah, as soon as we say, come out for the sake of Allah, do something, إِثَّاقَلْتُمْ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ You're so heavy, you don't want to move from the earth. You're so heavy, you don't want to move. So if I have to go to work, because I have to be in LA at 7 a.m., I woke up at 3.30, and I'm in the way, 5, 6 a.m. to get to work, I have to, and that's fine, that's for my journey, right? But when it comes to Saturday, Salat Fajr, I'm so heavy, I don't want to do it. What's wrong? Amal. Over there, I was, I had to do it and I was doing it and even if they told me to wake up at 2.30, I would do it because I have to. But here, Saturday, I have to sleep. But how about Salat? Malakum itha qaytu malabas. Thick, heavy. See those trucks that are so heavy? They move them like they have to push them through. You guys are like this, those mu'minin that are doing these things. Araghaytum bil hayat al dunya? Are you satisfied with hayat al dunya? With the life of dunya? Dunya be life? Earthly life? That's why you're, you know, so. Salawada wa Muhammad wa Muhammad wa Jannat, heaven, it's mixed and is covered with difficulties. But hell, it's all around the shahawat and, you know, loss and legitimate desires. You want to go to hell? Easy. Very easy. You know what to do. Not you guys. <laughs> easy, you can go to hell. Very easy. But going to heaven? It has difficulties. You have to know it. You have to do it. You have to show it. You have to act upon it. You learn, do it. From to tonight, I promise myself, as soon as I learn something new, I write it down in my notebook. I will write it down in my notebook. Tonight I learned one more thing. I'll be so happy if you learn one more thing. One thing every night, that will be perfect. One thing I learned tonight, 
and I'm writing it down. So I want to definitely act upon this knowledge that I just learned. I want to act upon it. I have to do it. I have to practice it. I want to see how does it taste. How beautiful is that amal? How beautiful is that you know, action? And the importance of amal, this is the last word, inshallah. The importance of amal is that the amal, when you do it, it gives you the world view. The world view that when you need it, it comes to help you. Remember the topic we talked about death and grave? You know when they put you in your grave, two malak they comes to ask you some questions, the most important questions in your life, <coughs> the most the, the most difficult and scary and important test that you have to pass. Because if you don't pass it, you fail it permanently. What is it? Man Rabbuk, who's your God? Man Nabiyuk, Man Imamuk, Makita. These are so easy to say you have. Who is my God? Oh, Allah. Then why is it so scary that even those people that they don't believe in Allah, when they see those things, they will lie. So what? How easy to lie, right? They come to ask me, who is your God? My God is something else. But I said, oh, Allah, because I'm seeing it right now. So why is it so difficult? Why is it so deep? You know, say it's this scary. Have you thought about this? Some people, they can lie. They're good liars, mashallah, in dunya. And they practice it. So before I die, I practice it, practice practice. So I know that then it comes. Those malak, they come and they lie to them, and then I go to heaven. Mosh is so easy. Huh? Now, this is the problem. Depends on my amal. Whatever. Whoever was my rap in dunya, during my background, my life, your tongue can lie, but your heart cannot lie. They don't ask this tongue. They ask this heart. Who is your God? The God that I worshipped during my life? It was my house, my money, it was my boss, it was the dunya. I will answer exactly according to that background. Who is your Imam? Who are you following? Who is your Rasul? Exactly the mom that I chose in dunya in the entire of my life will come to my tongue. I can't lie over that, I'm sorry. Whoever you followed in dunya will come to your mouth, your tongue. What book did you follow? It will come to your mouth. You can't lie. That's the scary part. Because I might say, oh, I'm following Allah, but when it comes to that, I see that, no, I'm following my nafs. I'm following my nafs. That is the scary. One of the Rafa'i was saying, to reach Allah, you don't, you have to take two steps. And some people say, why did you see two steps? <coughs> this is all I find, the stereo, you know. That's the thing. Two steps towards Allah. The first step, step on your nafs and trample your nafs. The second step is Allah. The other alim says, oh, it's too far. There's only one step. You step on your nafs, Allah is there. I kill my nafs, jihad akbar. Kill my nafs in amal. Desires in amal. It's inviting me to something else, but in Amal, I am what? In Amal, I am showing something else. So that was the importance of Amal, action, and so on. In Ibadat, in my life, I have to act on it. From tomorrow, from tonight, whatever I learned so far, I review them. I write it down from now on. Whatever I learn, I act upon it. If it's Ibadat, in my Ibadat. If it's behavior, my relationship, in my relationship. From tonight, I promise myself to analyze my relationship with my beloved ones around me, my closest one. If there's something wrong, I want to act upon those things that I've learned so far. 
I would review some of the stories and the hobbies that Sayyid was saying to us at the night of the topic of the death that some people would be tortured so badly because they didn't have Ahmed in this dunya I would put it in front of my eyes in order not to forget it inshallah not to forget it inshallah Allah Allah You know that tonight we are all yetim tomorrow and tonight from last night we see that Amir al Muminin he left this dunya and he was one of the fathers Rasulullah and Amir al Muminin that we had. If you go to Kufa, you see that it's so empty at night. Every night, the streets of Kufa, they could hear the sounds of a person who is walking, the shoes of a person who is walking in the street of Kufa around Sahar at night helping poor people in a town. Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein last like last night when when they buried the holy body of Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam they were coming back towards their house. They saw that there is a voice of a person who is crying. <coughs> It was a broken place. They heard there is a voice coming from that place. They got closer. They saw there is a blind elder, old man, sitting in that broken area place. And he is crying and crying and he is shouting. They ask him, oh my brother, what happened when you are crying? He said, I don't know, every night I had a friend that he was coming here every night, sitting next to me, he was bringing food for me, he was sitting next to me, and tonight it's been two nights that I don't hear, I don't see him anymore. I miss him, I want him back, I want to see him. He was blind, he couldn't see who is that person. And they ask him, oh brother, did you have any sign of this gentleman that when he was coming to you, you were feeling happy? He said, I can't see. I couldn't see that who was this great moment that he was coming here and he was helping me. But what I know that it was whenever he was stepping toward this broken place, I could hear the walls and the trees were doing respectfully. They were doing ruku to him. I could feel that these areas, they are respecting this man when he was coming to this place. <laughs> They said, oh, oh brother, that man that you are talking about, he was Amir al-Mu'mineen, our father, Ali alayhi salam. We are just coming back because we just buried Amir al-Mu'mineen, our father. You are not going to see him anymore. Ya Ali, after you left, many people in this world, many people in Kufa has been yatim, Ya Amir al -Mumini. Not only the Aitam, the little kids, those little kids that they brought a bowl of milk for you. No, many people became yatim, all those people that you were helping. It has been narrated when Amir al Mu'minin was going to the house of these people. Some of them they didn't even know Amir al Mu'minin. In one occasion, Amir al Mu'minin brought food for one of these houses. She was the mother of the house. She was appreciating Amir al Mu'minin. She was not knowing Amir al Mu'minin. She said, I am praying that Allah would take our right from Ali. He said, What happened? 
happened? Who is what? What did Ali do to you? I mean, moment asked her. She said, Ali is the one who killed my husband. It was all the propaganda about Amir al muminin that he was helping them. He was bringing food for them. They didn't know that this is Ali. How madloom you are, oh Amir al muminin They said one day Amir al muminin he was in the house. One of his items, he was crying. He said, I want to... <laughs> I want to ride a horse. Amir al muminin says, get this piece of wood and act like this is a horse. He said, no, I want a wood. I, I want the horse that is moving. Amir al muminin he bent down, put this little orphan on his back, and he tried to make him happy. Yo, Ali, with all this humbleness and tawadu, you are the first person in this world after Rasulullah, after you, many people are upset Ya Ali but I know that Zahra is a happy tribe because you are next to Zahra you are happy I know that Rasulullah is a happy Ya Amir al muminin but you know the heart of Ya 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 Amir al muminin please send our salam to Rasulullah Please send our salam and regards to Zahra. Salam Allah.